What's up y'all? Today I'm going to be talking about something that I'm sure if you're an experienced fursuit maker you're probably thinking, why are you talking about this? It's really simple. But with these videos I try to aim for, you know, a kind of like complete beginner demographic. So I figured that since this is a very important part of the fursuit, it would be very beneficial to go over it. Now because I said that it is an easy part of the fursuit to make, which it is, I'm not going to go over like the complete basics on how to make a tail because I can tell you right now, here's how you do it. Make your shape, double it over, cut it out, sew it together, bam, you have your tail. That's basically as simple as it is to make a like a really simple, you know, dog tail. So for this video, I'm going to go over three things that are probably the not, you know, super common knowledge on how to make the tail or three things that might be beneficial beneficial <laughs> to first time tail makers. Okay, the first thing. All right. All right, the first thing I'm going to talk about the tail is the tail loops or the belt loops, what your belt goes through when you have the tail. Now there are two ways to do this. Well, not really two ways per se, but two different, I guess, techniques. And I'm going to be using my tail here to show you what they are. The first technique, oh my goodness, kitten. The first, kitten. <laughs> kitten. The first technique is the belt loop on the backing of the tail. As you can see mine here, basically what it is, is you're going to take your belt loop and you're going to put it on the back of the tail. Like I just said, this can be done in one loop or two, depending on how big the backing of your tail is. I have one here, you can do two, it really doesn't matter. It's gonna be the same technique. The second technique, which I don't have shown here, is when you take the belt loop and you put it above the backing of the tail. So it kind of sits on top of it rather than straight on it. Now there are pros and cons to both these techniques and I'm gonna tell you them right now. The pro for this technique is the fact that this backing here is going to be more hidden. It's not going to be as easy to see because your belt's going to go right into it. And generally, this technique is going to be a little sturdier. It's going to keep your tail in place a little better and it's going to keep it more well hidden. The cons to this technique is sometimes if you make the backing wrong, your tail can kind of pop out, I guess you could say, because this area isn't flat. So it might make your belt loops a little more obvious sometimes, but not always. But that's one of the cons of doing it this way. The pros of the over loop technique is the fact that your tail will sit a lot better because generally since there's no belt that needs to be going in there, your tail will sit flat and it will, you know, sit better. I'm sorry, I'm at a loss for words, but that's just what it will do. It will look more flat against the back of your body. The big pro about the overloop thing that I personally don't like is I find that the tail is a lot less sturdy on your body than using this technique because what it is, is your belt is going through it and the tail is kind of just sitting on your backside. So if your belt is not, you know, looped in, super hard, your tail is going to start flopping around everywhere. I've seen people enter dance comps with the technique with the over belt loop and by the time they're done dancing, their tail is on their side. So that's just one reason that the over loop technique is a little less preferable if you want a really sturdy tail. Overall, whatever technique you use of those two, it's, a, it's completely personal preference. They both have their pros and cons like I've talked about, but neither one is like, you know, explicitly wrong. If I really had to give a preference, I would say the belt loops on the back of the tail is probably more preferred for bigger tails, where the over loop one is preferred for smaller tails, like deer tails and rabbit tails, while the other one is like big husky tails and like stuff like that. So if I really had to give a preference, that's what I would say. But again, look at your design and see which one works best for your fursuit and just do whatever you feel is right. Oh, get off. Get off. Damn it. I'm sorry in advance for the copious amounts of kitten you see in this video. I thought she'd be more scared of my fursuit, but I guess not. Kitten! 
All right, the second thing I'm going to talk about is the belts themselves, but I'm not gonna be talking about your normal belt because most fursuits are held on by, you know, just your regular standard pants belt. This belt, this is a, this is a specific belt that fursuit makers have found to give the tail a little more bounce to it, and that is the kidney belt. This is a brand I use, but it's not the only brand. That's what it is right there, that picture. It is a belt that's actually made for working out. It's made for waist trimming to, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the exercise use for it is. I think it like trims down on your fat as like you're sweating or something like that. But anyways, these are very good for giving your tail a lot more bounce, a lot more natural feeling to it because what they do is they encompass your whole torso and they give your tail that base to like bounce around on as your body moves rather than just hanging on some flimsy belt loop. This one I got at my local sports store. I got it at Dick's. It was about $12, I would say. There's a whole bunch of other brands. God, I can't grab it. I've known people who use the Ace brand. They get them on Amazon or online or wherever. So there's a ton of them. All you really have to do is go online and type in kidney belt and find one that's right for you. Make sure they do actually come in sizes, I think. Some of them are one size fits all, but some do come in sizes. This one is a large. I've gotten small and mediums before. So just make sure they fit your waist because you, there's nothing worse than a belt that doesn't fit you. They are super adjustable though. They're adjustable by uh, Velcro. And so, you know, they're meant to stretch because they're meant for workouts. When putting a fursuit on one of these belts, it's actually fairly simple. My personal technique is I create a backing for the tail and make sure that there's a backing on the tail. I will then glue it onto the belt and then I will sew it in on top of that so it gets that extra, you know, sturdiness tip for if you're going to use a kidney belt. If you really want to give it that extra oomph, that extra bounce, make a foam core in it. A foam core is literally when you take foam and you put it at the base of your tail. You don't have to put it all the way through the tail, but put it at the base and then put your backing on it. So right at the base, right around this much, I guess you could say, like right there, that would be made of foam. And so your tail, in a sense, has a base to like wiggle from. So it's gonna give it a lot more oomph. Along with the kidney belt, you're really gonna get a like natural swaying motion to the tail, which a lot of people like. So for now, I would say that if you're thinking about using a kidney belt, foam core is always a good way to go. You do not have to use foam core when using a kidney belt, but it's definitely a plus. Is sitting behind me. Like my video, if your cat too is not afraid of fursuits when you thought they would be. One thing you have to know about kidney belt tails though is they go in a little different than your regular fursuit tails on the bodysuit. You're gonna have to make the hole bigger, but make sure you keep an awareness of how big you're making it because kidney belts, when they go through, they have a tendency to stretch the tail hole and will cause your tail to look like it has. It's hanging out of a very gaping hole. There's so many bad innuendos in this phrasing, I'm sorry. But what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to put something around the end of that tail to cover up the fact that the hole is a little bigger and it might show the belt on the inside, which is what you don't want. My personal technique is I'll take a little piece of fur and I'll line it around the hole so when the tail goes through, it kind of sits as a cover to make sure you can't really see the belt inside the bodysuit. Last thing we're gonna talk about in this video, and that is tails attached to bodies. I will say this right now, my personal preference on bodysuits is a, a detached tail. I do not mind attached tails, but I personally find detached tails are better because they offer the ability to partial, and I just, I'm more comfortable with them. I know there are people who like attached tails better. It's all personal preference, but if you are somebody who likes attached tails and would like to know how to do them, I'm going to talk about that now because it's not a hard concept. And if you want to do it, go for it. I'm going to explain to you the process of how to make an attached tail. What you do, take your bodysuit, find where you want your tail hole to go, take the base of the tail and measure it or eye it or whatever you want to do and make the shape in the bodysuit approximately the size of the base of the tail. You can probably give or take a few inches. It's really not going to matter. But anyways, Cut it out of the bodysuit, cut the hole in, and stick the tail in. 
and sew it in. That's all you really have to do. You just, it's basically sewing it into the bodysuit. I would highly suggest against sewing on top of the bodysuit because that's not gonna give you the structural integrity that you want and I'll explain why in a second. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure to cut the hole out and you're going to stick it in and sew it at the seam to make sure it's really integrated in the bodysuit. When you do this, you can either put a backing on the tail before or after. It's probably easier if you do it before, but I've definitely done it after. It's really up to you, whatever technique you feel comfortable with. Here is the key reason though that you always wanna make sure to sew the tail into the bodysuit and not on top of it. Even if the tail is sewn into the bodysuit, you have to put belt loops in it because unless the tail is like a deer tail or something really small that really has no weight to it, if you just sew the body, if you just sew the tail onto the bodysuit and there's nothing inside to reinforce it to hold it up, you're gonna have a saggy tail. That's not gonna be fun. You're just gonna be like in a onesie with a tail sagging behind you. The belt loops are in there to give it that extra strength, that extra base. So even if you have an attached body, so even if you have an attached tail, you're still gonna be putting a belt on inside it to give it that um to give it that extra strength so it's not like sagging down your behind. Again, smaller tails probably can, you know, deal with that, but if you have anything like a dog tail or bigger, you're probably going to need those belt loops inside to make sure your tail is sitting how it should be. You can also do an inside attached kidney belt. I've never done that. It's similarly the same process, though I would say if you were going to do an inside attached kidney belt, to put the tail on the kidney belt and then pull it in and attach it, it might be harder, but I would think that putting the kidney belt on after the tail is attached to the bodysuit would be even harder than doing that. Honestly, if you just do the belt loops and you attach the tail, those should be fine. The tail attached to the body combined with the regular standard belt loops should be enough to make sure your tail is sitting where it is and it's as sturdy, sturdy as it should. Again, it's personal preference for if you want your tail attached to the bodysuit or not. There are, as I've said, there's pros and cons to both, but it, at the end of the day, it's what you want to do. If you like to partial, I suggest not making it attached. If you don't care to partial, then go for it. There's something about a fursuit being kind of like a onesie that appeals to people where they feel like they don't have to, you know, get out of anything or anything falling off. And of course, if you just want to make a second tail, you can do that too. You can attach your tail to your bodysuit and you can make a second tail for partial. Like, it's really up to you. You can do anything in fursuiting. It's art. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I hope you laughed at me if you didn't learn anything. And I wish you all luck in making your first tails. I thought about addressing in this video techniques for making more complex tails, like something you know that's not a dog tail or a cat tail, but I figured that might be a topic for another video. So if you would like to see that video, let me know and I'll probably make it down the line. Still wanna clog up this one and I didn't know if anyone would be interested. So yeah, as always, let me know what you wanna see below and I will see y'all next time.